Hello, Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. <laughs> Why? Why is it always like this? Why is it always like this? Okay, that's our theme. For me, Gemini season is overstimulating, frustrating, anxiety inducing. So we're just going to do a very chill reading today and we're going to, hmm, let's see, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think the question's going to be, why does the universe hate me right now? And it's, you know, those days, those days when it feels like, you know, nothing is going right at your job and it's going to, you know, the day is um, never ending. Every time you think, oh my God, it's been at least an hour and a half since the last time I looked at the clock. Holy shit, it's been 18 minutes. 18 minutes. It's been 18 minutes. I was resisting looking at the clock for hours, it felt. You know. So this is a reading for when you're coming home at the end of that kind of day. And if you're like me, those, those times you have even less coordination than usual. And, uh, you know, it's just everything's frustrating. Your hormones might be shit, perhaps. Let's pull some cards about it. Pile one, Dark Angels. Pile two, Pulp Tarot. Pile three, Buffy Tarot. Okay, let's get going. We also have lots and lots of, um... okay, I'm gonna move this trash can out of the way. You'd think I'd remember to do that before I press record, but I don't. Okay. I'll start with the tarot. Like, what the fuck is up with this day? What's with today today? Damn the man. Save the empire. I don't feel the need to explain my art to you, Warren. Those are some uh, quotes from Empire Records. <laughs> What's with today? sure what the idea is here like if uh if I'm looking for solutions on how to de-stress at the end of a crazy day if I'm looking for some validation um for like you know sometimes you just need somebody to be like man that sounds like awful I'm so sorry I'm so sorry you had to go through that you deserve a bottle of wine You deserve to skip your nightly walk after you've been on your feet all fucking day waiting on people. You know, when you're just sick of being a public servant. <laughs> That's what this reading is.
put all this shit. Who knows? up with today? How do we suck it up at our shitty jobs and just get through the day without getting emotionally involved? How do we just fucking suck it up, leave it, leave work at work? How do we do that? We need advice on that. How do we leave our crappy jobs behind because we don't get paid enough to think about them when we're not there. How do we do that? I don't know if I'm going to have enough room for all the cards I wanted to have. We'll just, we'll see what we can do because I don't feel like changing the shop. God. <laughs> How do we serenity prayer that shit? So this is for all my public servants out there. Or and and by public ser public servant, I mean essential worker. I mean anyone that works with the public. Be you a nurse or a librarian or a fucking suit for food service worker. And I say fucking food service worker. What I mean by that is fucking food service, man. I mean, talk about like people fucking yelling at people about their food like is the worst. If you've had to, if you work in any kind of customer service and you came to this reading because you just had a shit day and you want to relax. Well, that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Say you did 547 registrations for new library cards yesterday. Say you uh, just had someone totally berate you when you basically saved their wife's life at your job as a nurse or other medical professional. We're just here to unwind. I don't know. We're, we're going to get some messages too. But we're just pulling cards. We're just playing with cards. If you're a card player with her yourself, play with some cards. Play with some cards yourself. Let's do this. Let's chill together. Pretend this uh, LaCroix is a fucking whiskey. Let's drink it together. I am going to need a refill here in a minute. Because I'm not going to be without beverage on this night. No, no. So be with beverage if you can. Whatever, whatever your poison is. Sit back, have a sip, go on this journey. Okay, there it is. All right, we're going to start with your dark goddess, because she's the one that decided to fly onto the floor. Sedna, abandonment. So the whole thing with Sedna, an Inuit goddess, her story is, oh man, it's heartbreaking. Like, I don't remember all the details, but I know the end of the story is that she was trying to get her dad to help her. She had fallen out of a boat, maybe because he took her out there to kill her or something. I don't know. But she had fallen over the side of the boat and she was trying to, gra to reach up into the boat and see, you know, her dad would help her. But he didn't. He cut off her hands instead or cut off her fingers instead or something like that. And then she sunk to the bottom of the ocean, heartbroken forever. And then, like, she ended up having seals for hands or something. I don't know. 
but the point is, a lot of the times in a goddess deck, if you see Sedna, the keyword might be like victimhood or some shit. And here we have abandonment. So in the context of we're talking about work stresses, do you feel abandoned? Do you feel abandoned by your coworkers? Do you feel like there are coworkers and friends that you love, that you cherish as human beings. However, at work, there's a lot of, meh, not my job. A lot of, you know, they really could learn how to help you. They could learn about this much of your job just to help you out a little bit. And some of them do, and you love them for this. You appreciate them for this. And because it's really minimal effort on their part, but it means the world to you. And then everybody else, they won't even make that minimal effort. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about feeling abandoned at work. I'm, I'm talking about like divide and conquer job responsibilities. Like who is being a team worker and who isn't. And I'm not talking about like when it comes to like employee, employer relationships. I'm talking about just amongst your equals. We all got to pull our weight. And I'm not talking about going the extra mile. I'm not talking about working. If you only make $11 an hour, don't work harder than that, but at least work that 11. And if you're not going to work that 11 for your boss, work that 11 for your fucking coworkers. Let's turn over your tarot. Three of cups. Yeah, you know, your ride or die work bitches, your work wives and husbands, they're important. Do right by them. And, you know, hold them to it to do right by you. Sometimes people just aren't saying what they need to say, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you need help, but you haven't actually verbalized what you need. Do it. Verbalize it. Let your coworkers know what one little thing would make a huge difference in your day. Temperance. Yeah, because you need to be calmed. There's a lot of rage happening within you. <laughs> yeah. You have become the... You know, okay, so, you know those co-workers that, like, they, um, their mood rubs off on everyone? Like, whether they're, if they're in a gregarious, good-natured mood, then everybody else is too, but if they come in to work just, like, with a chip on their shoulder, then everybody else feels it too, and it just brings the entire morale down. I want you to identify, identify in your mind right now who is that person. Who is that person at your workplace? Is it you? Is it someone else? If it is you, find a way to be calmed. <laughs> um, we'll get more into that, but I'm more thinking we got two co-workers here. We got the one that is a fucking embodiment of the tower, just raging out all the time. And then we have the one that calms everyone. Are you one of these? Do you have a close relationship with one or both of these? Because I do think that this is kind of a holy, holy trinity. <laughs> the tower person, the temperance person, and you, perhaps. Or if you're the temperance person, then, you know, your mileage may vary. But I do feel like it's kind of like, it's a coven. You guys have the ability to, when you're working together well, you can get all kinds of shit done. Five of Swords. Yeah, because you, you need to, you need to, you know, like, it would be best for you and them. It would be best for everyone if you worked together. We're not talking about abandonment here. Don't abandon your coworkers. Don't let them abandon you. Work together. King of Cups. 
Yeah, and find a healthy release for for this person. And this person too, because the person that's always the one that calms everybody else, you know that if they care enough to calm someone else down, that it means that they know what it's like to not be calm. They might look calm on the outside, but check in with them too. Check in with them too. Their cup might be ready to overflow. Because in order to gain emotional control at the workplace, again, because I'm just really focusing on work right now. In order to regain emotional control in the workplace, everybody's got to be harmonizing. And these two people get to still exist. And they can exist... I mean, I do see these two people as friends. <laughs> like, maybe you even have a really special relationship with you know, the rage monster at work. Maybe you're one of the only people that can see, sort of, see through to the real, like, little squishy puppy dog underneath, <laughs> you know? Um, and maybe you're always defending this person to everyone else. Um, keep doing that. Keep defending them. Keep, keep being... If this is you, if you are the temperance, if you are sort of the calm one in your workplace that brings everyone together, make sure that your needs are met too. Because I am getting this like sort of asking for help vibe. Ask for help, yes. Um, what else is I going to say about that? I forgot. Okay, I'll go back to it. I'll go back to it when I, when I remember. Four of Wands. That was actually, um, that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing. Go out. Okay, yeah, I was thinking release valve with this King of Cups. Make sure that there's a release valve. If you are the type of person that can organize events, you know, organize like some kind of board game party or after hours drink at the bar or just a dinner with all of your coworkers, where you can get to know them as human beings behind the scenes because that's kind of what I'm seeing with with this is that if you're in a five of swords place you're not bonding with your coworkers. but if you can bond with them if you can see them as ride or die babes even if your job is still shit and your bosses are still whatever even if circumstances are still shit if you are in harmony with your coworkers, if you feel like they have your back and you have theirs it's going to make things so much better for you it's going to make things so much better for you see them as your allies and don't let the little things that they do the way you know we all have our own workflow our own way of doing things and don't let them make you feel like you're doing your workflow wrong as long as you're bringing it, as long as you're working the right amount, not working more than you're getting paid, but bringing it for your coworkers, you know? As long as you're bringing it still, don't let other people make you feel like your workflow is wrong. Queen of my world. And this is a full moon card. This is a person like in sort of a desolate space. But she's the only color in the space. So yeah, I, I, I also think that this person, whoever this tumultuous person at your workplace is, you're enamored with this person. Or you are this person and people are enamored with you. You are the light. So embrace your inner light. Or if this is another person that kind of lights up your life, you know, it's okay to be friends with them. It's okay to enjoy their company. It's okay to see them as an ally. Like there's this reluctance to like bond with people. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Do you see this card? It's, it's nonsense. That's what it is. I am going to read the guidebook, though, because I kind of have to. With this deck, did I read it in the back? Okay, what is it? 71. Mechanical thinking will take you no further than the robot on this card can go. There you go. Do not... Do not think like a robot when you're at work. Don't just think that you can just like tune out, do the work. I mean, it, there, it's a balance, right? Like tune out and do the work as a coping mechanism, but don't take it too far. Don't completely isolate yourself from everyone else because this is a chunk of your life, especially if you work full time. This is a chunk of your life. It should be enjoyable in whatever way it can be. Wind. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like that's a certain amount of venting needs to happen. Venting needs to happen. Y'all are on the edge of exploding about a particular thing. And y'all need some temperance. You need, to, you need some emotional control. You need some coming together. You need a ritual. Maybe go bowling. Something. Something. You need a bond with your fucking coworkers, man. Sacred space. <laughs> yeah, and having the sacred space card, like, right underneath that four of wands over there. Create a sacred space. If you can be the one, and totally understandable if you can't, but if you can be the one that's, like that opens up your house to your coworkers, like, hey, let's have a fucking potluck, my house, Saturday night, everybody come, BYOB, like, let's vent about some shit that's been going on lately. Y'all need that. If you can be that, and I do sort of see that you, I mean, I think you're one of these two people. So you know which one you are. You're either the one that provides the sacred space for your work, for your coworkers. You're the one that is the calm one, or is viewed as the calm one, or you're the rage monster. And you even, you know, we're, t we're in Gemini season right now. You could be both of these people. <laughs> you could be. But I do see this as a particular bond between these two people, is what I'm seeing. Nurture that bond. I mean, don't take it to an inappropriate level if you're about to cheat on your spouse or something. Like, obviously, there's something else to look at there if that's what is happening here. But I'm just seeing this as, like, work wives kind of thing. <laughs> but this person needs to be taken out for a drink. Whether that's literal or if they don't drink, you know what I mean. They need to be taken out. There, there needs to be a venting session. Okay, I think that's that's what I got for this pile. That is what I've got. Where are these cards? All right, pile two. All right, we're talking about work. Whatever your profession is. Work, 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 work. You better work, bitch. You want a Maserati? You want a Bugatti? <laughs> you better work, bitch. <laughs> so what do we need? What do we need for a better work-life balance? relationship. Are you taking work too seriously? Are you taking it not seriously enough? What do we need? What do we need? What do we need to talk about, Pile 2, with your work life?
we're talking about here? What are we talking about? What do we need to talk about when it comes to your work life? Gemini season, like it's the way that I view work, what I want out of my work life, what, you know, this has been a thought lately is how this got started here. It. I'll go ahead and reveal it. This is the same one that Pile 1 got. Queen of my world. This is again, I'm seeing like there's a specific person at your workplace, whether this be, and I think the important thing is to ask yourself, is this you or is this like your work wife or your work husband is, is this, do you completely light up someone else's life at work? And I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about friends here. I'm talking about, you know, you spend like what a third of your day. Yeah. If you work eight hours a day, five days a week, you're spending a third of your day, five days a week with these other human beings. You might as well know them. You might as well appreciate them for who they are. You might as well enjoy their company, right? This reading is turning into how, how to be friends with your coworkers. <laughs> and I'm seeing that like, specifically with you, I'm seeing more of a vibe of like, So you see that this woman is in a red dress in a colorless environment, right? So. so she is the life, queen of my world. She is the life in the darkness, the light in the darkness, the life in a dead place. Maybe everything is wrong with your job except for your relationship to this person or you are the one that other people are just, they're delighted to see you every day because you are full of light. Maybe you dress really interestingly and everybody's just like excited to see what you're wearing every day and they take actual joy from it. Maybe you don't trust it. I know that's how I am whenever people are like, oh my God, nice outfit. I'm always like, oh yeah, are you making fun of me? <laughs> it's like, we don't need to be defensive. Okay, I gotta get a new beverage. Okay, so hold please. You guys, I just realized I'm doing a sunset reading right now. Didn't even point that out. So magical, right? Um, okay, let's flip. Commitment. Completion. Think about it for a while. Okay. So are you thinking about, so what is this for you personally? When you think of, when you think about your job, when you think about the entire situation, like all the details, the coworkers, the tasks, the bosses, the, if you are a boss, your employees, like when you think about all of it together, all of the details synthesized together, are you committed to this relationship? The relationship that you have with your job? 
Are you done? Think about it for a while. Also, alternatively, since I have this Queen of the World card, Queen of My World card, are you distracted by your relationship with a coworker? Is it making you question whether or not you are still committed to your other relationships? Could be that we got some straying eyes here. Four of Pentacles. So in this particular Four of Pentacles, we got a guy who is like fucking drowning in quicksand to hold on to his four dollars. So yeah, I'm seeing this as like, maybe it is time to get the fuck out of your current job, pile two. Three of Wands, yeah. I mean, you could decide, you know, you've got, you've built up some skills in this job, right? Think about it for a while. Don't, don't let me sway you too much. Just let me make you think. You know what I'm saying? Three of Wands. You could be ready for the next thing. But right now you're not moving yet. You're just sort of standing at the threshold, kind of looking at your other options, right? Temperance. Pile one got temperance too. Part man, part woman, all angel. One foot in the water, one foot on land. Temperance. Yeah, don't, I mean, dip your toe into whatever it is that <sighs> the next thing, the next job, the next relationship, whatever it is that you've got like one foot in both worlds just don't go too far. You're still thinking about it. You haven't made the decision yet. Don't rush into the decision. But there's something that you might be done with. You know, we've got these cycles here. Or this could be an indication that this is just a part of your cycle. Like whatever you're feeling right now, if you're feeling like jumping ship in your relationship, in your job, why are you feeling that way? Is this just kind of what you go through every May? Or every June, I guess, because by the time this is up, it'll be June 1st. Is this just kind of what you go through? Is this a part of your sort of flippity? Is this a part of your thing? Is this what you do? Or is it going to even out? Or do you need to make a change? I think it's not time to answer that question yet. It's time to ask it. It's time to think about it. It's time to start making some pro-con lists. Four of Wands. Pile one got Four of Wands, too. This was my, this Four of Wands is my card of the day for my patrons. So if you're one of my patrons, I'm recording this on our Four of Wands day this week. So I do want to point that out. Special, special indication that if you made your way here and you are one of my patrons, either pile one or pile two, seven of pentacles. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in, you're in a reassessment phase. You don't know what you want to do yet, but the big question is where, where are you committing most of your time? Are you still completely 100% committed to this relationship, this job? And I, and I am really trying to focus on work here, so I think it is mostly work, but I think there are a few people that picked this pile that, like, there's a relationship involved here, too. Somebody you work really well with. Six of Wands. So the dilemma for you might be I'm getting the feeling that like you're not leaving a job because you don't want to let go of the money. 
You're not leaving a job because you've reached a modicum of success in this job. But I think it's time to take your happiness into consideration. If you are this guy sinking in, in the quicksand just to hold on to your four dollars, like success could lie elsewhere. Doesn't have to be in the current thing that you're doing. And then your goddess card, Sheila Nagig. Desperation. Um, why? Why is desperation the keyword on this card? I'm gonna go with my own knowledge of Sheila Nagig, which is that she is a fucking badass, right? She's an exhibitionist. Gotta wash that man right out of my hair. That's the Sheila and a Gig song by PJ Harvey, which is most of my knowledge about Sheila and a Gig. Let's look at the guidebook for this one, I guess. Jeez. To see why, why are we picking the word desperation here? Looking at the, consulting the guidebook for this particular deck isn't necessarily going to make me feel better about it, but let's see. Archit archetypal warrior of Irish origin. She was hailed as warrior, not warrior, warrior, like anxiety. She was hailed as the goddess who granted kingship. She would appear as a lustful hag, and most men would, would refuse her advances, except for one. When he slept with her, she was transformed into a beautiful maiden who would confer royalty onto him and bless his reign. Ooh. So, like, she appeared to them as ugly, and after they slept with her, she became beautiful. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's helpful to our situation. Why is it desperation? I don't know. Um, okay, well, let's just say if the word desperation resonates for you right now, Perhaps it does. Perhaps you are staying in this particular relationship or this particular job because you feel like it is your only choice. Well, it is not. It is not your only choice. But think about it for a while. I'm almost now reevaluating in the context of the rest of these cards this Queen of My World card. Like, maybe you need to find the color in your own life again. Because maybe you're feeling maybe you're feeling too old to change professions at this point. Maybe you're feeling like you've already invested too much time into this job, this relationship, whatever the case may be. But you do have options. You will find success if you go towards the thing that lights you up in your life. Be the queen of your own world. And... Spend time with other human beings, too. For fuck's sake, hang out with other people. Say yes to parties, sometimes. Maybe not literal parties, but you know what I mean. Say yes to hanging out with other human beings. Sometimes. You don't have to do it all the time. Sometimes. Okay. That's my pile, too. What do we need to know about the work-life balance of pile three? What's going on? What's going on at work? Do you like your coworkers? Do you like your job? Do you like your boss? Do you like your employees? Do you have them? Do you feel like 
you are, <laughs> just because this is Buffy Tarot, do you feel like you are the chosen one and you should do your job for free? Are you expected to do your job for free? And you're like, no, bitch, I deserve to get paid a living wage. <laughs> That's all of us, right? Like, come on, man. Can, can we get paid, like, an amount that we can live on? Like, is that okay? Can we get health insurance? Like, is this, are we asking too much? Okay, here we go. Can we, what do we need to know about the work-life balance? How's work going? How can we make it better? How can we get through the day? How can we leave it? Leave, leave it in the hallway like bad gas. How can we properly decompress at the end of the day? How can we not let it take over our lives in one sense, but also enjoy it more while we're in it in another sense? Obsession. What are you obsessed with? And this is specifically reminding me of like, I can sometimes be really like stuck in my own world when I'm at work. Like, I get too sucked into like YouTube drama or like, you know, having deep conversations with friends <laughs> um, on chat and like, I'm distracted. I'm distracted while I'm at work. I'm not really 100% there. I'm not being the best person that I can be while I'm at my job. And you know, some days it's just going to be like that. You know, and I'm not a fan of people working too fucking hard because I did that for too long. I worked my ass off um, for my job that pays me $11 an hour. And I've dialed it back a little bit and I'm trying not to apologize for it. But this obsession card is definitely showing up because there's something that is distracting for you. Either that's during the work day or if work itself has become your obsession and you're not, you know, because we were asking about the work-life balance. In your case, there might not be a good balance because you are thinking too much about work. Is that what's happening? You know where your obsession lies. What are you obsessed with right now? Before we turn any other cards over, what are you obsessing about right now. You don't have to answer me, answer yourself. Your goddess is Lilith with equality. Are you obsessed with everyone at your work doing the exact same amount of work? <laughs> like, do you get hung up on that? We have the sun. Are you being a martyr? right now at work? Are you being a martyr? And you want everyone to acknowledge all the hard work that you're doing, but you really don't have to do it in the first place. So maybe let go of that idea that you should be acknowledged for how hard you're working because it's taking a toll on you. Knight of Scythes. 
yeah, I'm almost wanting you... I don't want to say this to the wrong person, so you know if I'm not talking to you right now, okay? Don't use this as an excuse to be an asshole. But for those of you that I am talking to, it's just like, em sort of embrace your inner villain just as a self-concept, not to be an asshole, just to walk around with a little more confidence, walk around with a little bit more self-assuredness, walk around with the knowledge that you don't have to get everything done at work. You don't have to take it all on. And if people are used to you taking it all on, is some shit not going to get done when you pull back? Yes. But you're going to have to accept it and let them figure it out because you are obsessing. Hermit. Yep. Yep. King of Pentacles. Page of Cups. And seven of stakes. Yeah. You're having, I think there's an identity crisis happening here. You have fallen into the trap of being the martyr. Maybe, perhaps. Or whatever role you have fulfilled at your job, it's time for something else. It's time to shake it up. It's time to, you know, subvert people's expectations and stand up for yourself. Get the higher ground. You might have to actually put yourself out there a little bit, like show a little bit of vulnerability. Like if you come to work with the full mask on, just being a martyr, getting everything done, secretly resenting everyone else for not getting everything done. But everyone is just kind of like nervous around you because you're so intense and serious. Pull back. Disappear sometimes. Um, I guess this is, it, it just depends. Are you already showing a lot of vulnerability to your coworkers? If so, maybe pull it back a little bit. If you are not showing any vulnerability to your coworkers, open up to them a little bit. But whatever role you're in, you're st you feel stuck in it, but you're not stuck. wordless. Okay, so you're not going to have to say anything. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to explain yourself. You can do things the way that you want to do things while not doing all the things. Because it's like you want to swoop in and save people. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting a real martyr vibe. I'm getting a real martyr vibe. And it's making you resentful. Luminous warrior. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that card yet. Mimicry. Okay, who are you trying to be like? I'm seeing this as sort of like maybe a familial thing, like maybe you identify as being a really hard worker, an efficient worker. Um, you get shit 
done. That is part of who you are and the reason that you are that way is because you were brought up with that as an example. You know, your dad, mom, granddad, grandma was this luminous warrior, was this fucking hard worker that everyone respected and you're trying to follow in their footsteps, but that's not who you are. You're meant to work alone. You're a taciturn man or taciturn woman like Oz. You don't want to be saying a whole lot of words to get your point across, but you're trying to be this person at work that you're not. Because you have this sort of inner feeling of justice. Maybe you're a Libra. I know from which I speak. Trust me. If you feel like you're just like obsessed with things being equal and you're just like, well, I took the, I took the trash out last time. So it's Ed's turn. And I'm not going to fucking do it until he does it. And you're just seething inside when really if you just fucking did it, you know, just clock on, do the work that you think needs to be done, do the work that's important to you to do, do the work that you notice needs to be done. And don't worry about what everybody else is fucking doing. Don't worry about what everybody else is fucking doing. Unless you're a boss and you're supposed to be a task manager and you're supposed to keep others on task. If that's what you're paid to do, then that's one thing. But I do think if that is what you're paid to do, it may not be your true calling. Being up in everybody else's business might be making you cranky. Who are you trying to be right now? Who are you trying to impress? Are you trying to impress your mom who you don't work with? the memory of your mom. I think it's time to pave your own path. It's time to come out from the shadow of whoever it is that you're modeling your work self after. Maybe you had a real shitty boss and now you are a boss and you have inadvertently picked up some of their habits of like micromanagement or something like that. Um, that's, that's not where you're supposed to be. It's like you, it's like you're in a role or you've taken on a role or just the way that you're approaching your job. Maybe it's not that you need a different position. Maybe, but I do think it is that for a lot of you. It's time to switch positions. If you're a boss, then maybe you shouldn't be. If you can work for yourself, that's going to be the best option. But of course it is like, I've been trying to do that for, for years. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you don't, you can't always make the decisions that you want to make for your job but you have more freedom than you think. You've gotten stuck in a role when you are actually like all these people. You're the Knight of Swords, the Hermit, the King of Pentacles, and the Page of Cups. You are all of those people. But you've lost yourself. And I do think it's through promotion. It's like you got promoted many, many times in your job. And now you're just soul sick. I want to read this wordless card. Where is that little guidebook? Where is it? There it is. 88. 
The last card in the deck. Despite the obvious function of symbols, direct revelation has the primal place in realization. There are many means of communication that do not involve words, and the appearance of this card in a reading might mean that nonverbal messages are being sent. So, also additional message for you, if there's something that, like, hasn't been said yet at your job, that you, I'm reluctant to say this because I don't, I don't want to say it to the wrong person. If this is a paranoia of something you think is happening, that's not the thing I'm saying is happening, but there's some things left unsaid, either between coworkers or from the boss to you, um, from yourself to your employees, something unsaid that you assume is true. Some of it is and some of it isn't. Really great non-committal response, right? Or maybe there's, if there's a person like, say you are, I'm thinking of a situation where like you're the boss and you're trying to, um, you're trying to train somebody maybe, and you're using too many words for this person, or you're not using enough. And that person, maybe the better way to train them is to just be available when they have questions. Because you don't want to micromanage this person. Don't obsess about the way they're doing things. Don't create fucking psychological bullshit that they have to deal with the rest of their lives, okay? You, you've had that done to you. Don't do it to someone else. That's, that's kind of specific, so it probably doesn't apply to everyone. But yeah, there's an instinct thing here that's happening. It's not about doing what someone else has shown you to do or showing someone else the way. It's not about that. It's about finding your own way. The hermit finds their own way. This particular scenario in Buffy... Nobody needed to tell Spike what he was supposed to be doing in this moment. He knew. He just intuitively knew. Nobody fucking told Glory what to do. She was a god. Principal Wood had to come out from under his mom's shadow. And good old Clem, he's just a great supportive guy fun friend. Great supportive guy. Does do kitten poker. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like saying things about these particular characters on these cards from Buffy because that's how I read this deck. Yeah, it's about finding your own way. If you just became a boss and you do actually want to keep this job, you're going to have to find your own way of doing things. It's not about being a boss that you've seen before. It's not about being the kind of boss that your mom was. It's not about doing anything the way that someone else did it. And you're already headed down that path. And it's not you. You need to be yourself. Just because you have a different way of approaching the current position that you are in does not mean that you're doing it wrong. But also for a lot of you, you're in the wrong fucking field. You're in the wrong fucking prof profession or position in your profession. Because whatever, whatever you're obsessing on that is an inequality, whether you are, maybe you're obsessing that you're not getting paid enough, you're not getting paid as much as others in your same field, Whatever you're obsessing about, you have to find a way to let it go. If that means getting a different job, if that means changing the way you approach the job, um, because you're going to, to be able to 
provide an example by doing. You know, the whole thing about the hermit is they're not, they're lighting the path for you, yes, but they're lighting the path so that you can find your own way. They're not telling you how to do it. They're not telling you where to go. They're just showing you, hey, I, I found peace. You can too. But you have to do it in your own way. This obsession with equality has got to stop because the world is not fucking fair. <laughs> okay, didn't mean to end it on that note, but that is where I'm gonna end it. So thank you for watching. Thank you.